Bob, I've seen some strange things in my lifetime, things that I came to pass that I never thought would, and things that I never thought would did. And, you know, I classified it as one of these issues, I'm darned if I do and darned if I don't. So I did put that information out, um, but with that caveat. And, and I, yeah, Steve is, um, you know, I don't want to characterize him as being just one thing. I mean, he's done a lot of good work, but sensationalized, yeah, I will agree with that. Uh, and again, uh, let me remind you that the people that get on George Norrie to scare the hell out of people. You know, they don't put me on with possible solutions and talking to people, uh, even though that both of these, well, the other guy that I won't mention, but I put both of them on the national format. Uh, but when it comes comes around to g grabbing the grand poobah that did this, uh, I get no airtime. So I'll just leave it at that. But I, I'm in agreement with you, Bob. Uh, you know, I don't need more sensationalizing. Uh, the government is scaring the hell out of people as it is right now. We don't need people in our own fold doing the very same thing. And that's all I'll say on the subject. Well, that's what Fox does. Well, that's what they all do. I, I mean, that's what Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, Hugh Hewitt, Glenn Beck, Glenn Beck especially. Oh, and he's so good at it. I mean, people actually fall for this guy's shtick. Yeah. I, I saw him yesterday. He's a very good actor. Oh, buddy boy. I mean, this guy, he should. I mean, he's missed his calling. He went from uh, being a drunk comedian to television, and he really did miss his calling because he would make an outstanding actor because that's all the guy does when he's in front of camera. And I don't want, I don't want people with a shtick. I don't want the song and dance. Just give me real. Just give me the real. You know, I, I, everybody, and if you notice something, though, guys, Glenn Beck is making inroads into the Patriot movement. Uh, folks, I'm going to warn you of something. Friendly opposition. How many things have Glenn Beck, and we have a tendency to glaze over this and forget the things that the guy says that made you turn your head in the first place? And you go, what did he just say? And not in a good vein. I'm not meaning that in a good vein. You know, uh, did he did he uh, did he check out FEMA and camp FEMAs around the country? Oh well, he just totally discredited them. Oh, they don't exist. Yes, they do. So on important matters, you know, he'll get he'll push people's emotional hot buttons. He is very 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 good at doing that. So I'm just warning you. You know, Glenn Beck, <laughs> take him with a grain of salt. Uh, he should get well, an academy. Well, uh, John, it's 95 percent truth. And 5% misdirection, indirection, and gr uh, propaganda. And that's what Glenn Beck is all about. He's sucking the public in. He's using what the Patriot Movement is talking about and the distorting it. Yeah. And uh, that's what you're going to get from him. And we've discussed that before. And uh, he is in the woodpile. Does uh, Bob know if uh, China defaulted on those derivative contracts, and did our uh, embassies get into local currencies? Could you verify that, or are you not? You no, I do that? not know. Okay. So do not know. So on the scale if from I did, I'd 10, be the first one to tell you and the first one to write about it. Okay, Bob, one more question. On a scale from 1 to 10, something bad happening next week, with 10 being the highest, what would you uh, give it? Gee, uh, let me think. Well, I think uh, the stock market dropping five or 600 points would be uh, certainly a wake-up call. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we've seen our government for the last week attacking uh, the, uh, uh, the, um, the gold and silver prices, and if they were to turn around and run up 100 or $200 here, I think that would be a shocker to most people especially uh, the Illuminati. And uh, I, I think those two events uh, are possible. Or how about uh, the dollar falling like a rock and uh, U.S. defaulting on their debt to uh, the other countries? You know, that's another thing. Well, that, I, don't that's think you're see default, <laughs> I don't think you see a default yet. But, you know, we predicted 71.18 uh, on the dollar, and the government is, is trying desperately to keep it from plunging by entering in the market every day and let it, letting it go down easily or incrementally. Uh, today it closed at 75.54, up 0.24, uh, whereas it was uh, down 0.35 uh, yesterday. 
And so uh, by the end of the year, we'll see 7118. We may see it by the end of the month. And that could be a shocking event to people as well. So uh, those are some things that could happen that are possible and probable. Not some event on some specific date that's going to come out of nowhere and decimate something uh, and is sensationalized. We don't do that here. Well, and, and keep in mind uh, that the one individual we spoke about also sells gold. Now, uh, folks, I've been telling people to buy gold for 17 years before I started Republic Trading Group. It was common sense. And the only reason I started Republic Trading Group and Robbie as the chief broker here is because I got tired of the whores out there, as well as you, Robbie. Uh, you know all the players. You've been doing this for decades, and you know all the players out there. I know where all the buddies are buried. <laughs> well, you guys heard about Citibank today uh, cutting off uh, people's gas credit cards, and like I said, I received the email from uh, Chase Bank this morning saying that computers are going to be down from Saturday uh, midnight through uh, Monday there. Mm. So, you know, it's just a lot of funny stuff happening there, but uh, I'll just... Uh, well, hey, well, my antenna up. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we're going to know in five days, won't we? So, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's nothing wrong with having your antenna up, by the way. As a matter of fact, it should be a good exercise that everybody should uh, uh, be encouraged to do on a regular basis. All right. Chris, thanks for your call. I appreciate it. Jack in Minnesota, moving along here. Hello, Jack. Hello. Questions for Bob Chapman. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, what's your prediction? It seems like everyone's in agreement that the equity markets are going to take a crash here sooner or later. What, what's your prediction with the precious metal mining stocks when that happens? They'll go up. There might be some margin selling at the beginning uh, of a tumble. What would a tumble be? Probably a 1,000 points if it happened rather quickly. If it goes down slowly, then there'll be no change at all. There'll be a slight bit of margin here covering and and there uh, but if it does goes down quickly you can expect that there will be some margin selling in everything and so that could happen but the it will be factor, nothing like it'll be nothing like factor, uh, look, plus look last year isn't going to happen again okay. and the reason why it's not going to is there's no deleveraging process going on we've lost half of the hedge funds they've lost half of their money they're just starting to stabilize. And so that event where people rushed to dollars, the dollar ran up, gold ran down, the market ran down, that's not going to happen in that manner again. Although I will say the banks and brokerage firms are still very highly leveraged. The numbers we don't know because we can't get them. If I had to guess, I would say about 30 to 40 to 1. And uh, that's a problem, but it's not a problem for the market per se, it's a problem for their balance sheets. And the FASB early next year, if they go forward with mark to market, then there's going to be a problem. And sure. that is the market will go down because companies will have to tell the uh, truth about, you know, what's going on in their companies. And so um, a, a correction is going to come. There could be some selling in shares. There could be some selling in gold and silver and commodities through, you know, margin calls. Uh, people have a multiplicity of, uh, of investments, but I, I tell you quite frankly, uh, there are very few Wall Street firms, large ones, that have large positions in Agnico or Gold Corp and stocks like that because they're too busy taking their money and leveraging and running the stock market up at the behest of Washington and the aluminists who control the companies so that people won't be concerned about things that are going on. Everything must be okay because the market's up. What's wrong with the theory that if, uh, and I'm just saying this, well, it's more uh, my question for you, Bob. Uh, what's wrong with the theory that if I see, if I see a particular miner down, say, eight or ten percent, get out of it and wait for the dust to settle? Well, that's fine if you're a trader and you can assume those I've become uh, a trader. those risks. I, I pardon me. You made me into a trader. You created this monster. Oh no! Oh, see, I'm a long-term investor advisor. <laughs> I tell people to go long-term. Wasn't long -term. for you? I would have got into the stupid market. 
<laughs> By the way, I've made a fortune. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> you know, I can I can feel the tears running down his cheek yeah. as he counts the money. Yeah, yeah. And incidentally, John, you should deduct that from his salary. <laughs> He's on a commission basis only. But thank God, Robbie is not a greedy person. That's why you get the good deals when you call Robbie. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Hey, well, I tell you, I've seen some portfolios of coins lately from those major dealers, and it is absolutely heartbreaking what they do to people. Well, I, and, and, they are absolute criminals. Well, and, and Bob, here, here's the maximum a lot of these guys work off of. If you can pull a profit out of doing something, the more profit, the more successful you are, the better things are. Uh, you know, that that's the game. 